So we got 1.1. What's the next largest? Are you writing in order? We already got the 1.1. So notice between these two numbers, which one is actually the smaller of these two? 1.100 or 1.120. The 20 makes it big. 1.1. This is a smaller one, that's why we had it. Then we're going to do the 1.12. And our last number, our largest number, is the 1.2. So by making the numbers the same length, we can pretty quickly identify what's the smallest, what's the largest. What's the next smallest, what's the next largest. I want you to try a couple on your own. I want you to tell me which of these is bigger on your own. Don't say it out loud. Tell me which one of those is bigger. Tell me which one of these is bigger. And lastly, I want you to put these numbers in order from smallest to largest. Okay, so tell me which one's bigger here, which one's bigger here, and put these in order from smallest to largest. These are negatives. the 0 0.065 and the 0 0.802. One way we might figure out which one is the larger of the two numbers is to make them the same length by tacking on some zeros after the decimal place. So for instance, this has only three numbers behind our decimal place. This one's got four. So if I add on a zero, 0 0.0650, 0 0.0802, this makes it just a little bit easier for us to compare these two numbers. So which one is bigger between our 0 .0650 and our 0 .0802? Which one's the bigger one? Bigger. That one definitely is. If you want to compare place value by place value, that's also reasonable. So if you go, okay, here's my hundredths. I have eight hundredths here and only six hundredths here. This is definitely the larger number. If I put the zeros so they're the same length, I can easily identify which one's bigger. You okay with that? Now, as far as this one goes, these are the same length already. We've got 0.25 and 0.27, negative 0.25 and negative 0.27. Since they're the same length already, what you're going to do is pretend there's no decimal there at all. Which number is bigger, negative 25 or negative 27? Negative 25. Yeah, negative 25. So if negative 25 is bigger than negative 27, negative 0.25 is bigger than negative 0.27. How many of we got both those right? Good, all right. Especially the negative one, that's important. Okay, next step. Wow, that's a lot of threes. My goodness. Well, we better go start making those all the same length. So I know I've got 3.03. .03. That's the longest number here. We have two decimal places, two decimal places, and two decimal places. So I'm going to leave these ones alone. However, 
when I get to the 0 0.3, what am I going to change the 0 0.3 into? 0 0.3? 0 0.3, 0. Good. And the 3.3 .3 into what? 3.3. So now they're all three numbers long. We have uh, something in front of our decimal place and two numbers after in every single spot. That's what we want. Now it's going to be pretty easy to compare these numbers. We're going to go smallest to largest. What's the smallest number up here? If you ignore the decimal place, it's going to kind of tell you. This would be like 303. This would be like 33. This would be like 30, 330, or 3. Which one's the smallest of these numbers? 0 .3. This is the one. That's the smallest one. It's like 3. So writing smallest to largest. I'm going to translate that back into the number that we originally had. So 0 0.03. I cross it out because I don't want to get confused. I don't want to get confused with any of these numbers. I'm done with that one. I don't have to look at it anymore. After that, I pick the next smallest number. I look at these ones. What's the next smallest one? This one? Yes. Okay. I'm going to write that, 0 0.3. What we started out with, cross it out. What's the next one after that? 0.33. Yeah. These, all, these have the whole number out front. Those are definitely bigger numbers. Cross it out. We got two more. What's next? 3.03 .03 or 3.3? 3.03. Yeah, that'd be like 303. This would be like 330. And lastly, we'll get the 3.3. .3. Would you raise your hand feel okay telling which decimals are larger, smaller, and putting them in order? Yes, no? Okay, good deal. The next thing we're going to do, last thing for our section, we're going to refresh your memory on how to do rounding. Now, i got to tell you, the rounding rules are not going to change. Do you remember rounding from like our first chapter that we ever did in this class? We identified the place value. We looked at the digit to the right. If it was five or more, we did what? If it was less than five, we did what? Did we go down or stay the same? And then we followed it with zeros. True? The only thing that changes about this is that we don't necessarily have to follow it with zeros because the zeros after the decimal place don't really matter. They don't. So we're going to round the same exact way we did. The only thing you've got to be good at, you've got to know your place values, right? You've got to know them very, very well. If you don't, well, then we're going to make some mistakes on this. So we're going to round the same way we did in the first chapter. We're going to identify the place value, look at the digit to the right, not all of them, just the digit to the right. That's going to let us know whether we round up or stay the same. And the rest of the numbers we omit. You either write zeros or you just don't want them at all. Are you ready to try some? Sure. I hope so. It's Friday. This guy should be a little excited today. Music started playing. I mean, that's exciting. <laughs> it's not fraction Friday, though. It's not fraction. It is. Technically, these are all fractions. Okay. Oh. Oh. oh, boy. Yeah, that's actually the last thing I'll show you in this section, is how to change from a fraction to a decimal. So we're going to round 6.9237 to the hundredths. To the hundredths. You gotta be good at a couple things. First, knowing how to round in general. Second, knowing the place value. So we gotta identify the hundredths. We're gonna practice this with this, with this number right now. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, what is my, what, what digit is in the thousandths place? Three. three. Good, three. What digit is in the ones? Six. Six is in the ones. What's in the ones? Nine. The ones. There's no ones. There's no ones. Ah, there's no trick question. There's no ones. What's what's the nine then? Tens. 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 What's the two? Hundreds. What's the seven? Hundred thousand. Ten thousand. Tens. Ten thousands. Ten thousands. Ten thousands. Ten thousands. So we'd have ones, no ones. There's no such thing as ones. We have tenths, hundredths, thousandths, ten thousandths. It's hard to say that for me. It's just getting like a tongue twister. We're rounding to the hundredths. So the first thing you do, identify the place value we're rounding to. Again, what number's in the hundredths, please? Two. two. So we're going to underline the two. 
how you round things, there's a refresher course for you. You look at the digit to the right, not all the numbers, just the digit, that means the three. If this number is five or more, you raise this. If this number is less than five, you leave this alone. Are we going to raise the two up or leave the two alone? Leave it alone. So you're going to get 6.9. Two. Then what? You can if you want. Put zero zero. Do the zeros matter though? No. no. Not really. After the decimal place, you can omit them. So with rounding with decimals, you can put zero zero if you want, or you can leave it without the zero zero. It doesn't really matter. Some people like to put the zero zero signifying that it's a rounded number, that you round it to that. Let's try two more. I'll give you a few to do on your own. Let's do 12.385 to the, how about tenths? Tenths. Again, let's, let's practice. Ladies and gentlemen, what digit is in the tens? Three. The tens. One. I mean, one. One is in the one. tens. What's in the tenths? Three. Three. Three is in the tenths. Yeah. You gotta be careful on the ths and the z. Okay? The tens is a one. The tenths signifies after the decimal place, that's the three. So I'm gonna identify the tenths. I'm looking at the wait a minute, do I look at the digit to the right or the digit to the left? The digit to the right. Good, so I'm looking at the eight or the eight five? Eight. 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 Just the eight, the five doesn't even matter. Okay, we're just looking at that digit. Am I gonna move the three up or leave the three alone? Move it up. That's five or more, I'm gonna move it up. I get 12 point, and you can put a zero, zero, or just leave it 12.4. This eight rounded that three up one unit. Tenths. Three's in the tenths. There's no such thing as ones. <laughs> Remember, you've got to be really good at place value to get your rounding right. We're really good at it. <coughs> Okay, 0 0.46972 to the thousandths, the thousandths. Let's identify these place values. Everybody in here, what is this place value right here, the four? What is that? Tenths. Tenths, Tenths. Tenths. good. What is the nine? Thousandths. 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 What's the seven? Ten thousandths. Ten thousandths. What's the two? Hundred thousandths. 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 Which digit are we looking for? Thousandths. 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 That's the what now? That's the nine. Hey, watch carefully up here. Well, we, I had some concerns on your homework from the very first chapter when you did this. If we look at the nine right now, that is the thousandths. We look at the digit to the right. The digit to the right is a seven. Does a seven say to move the nine up? Yes. Where does the nine go? You can't do this. You can't go 0 0.4610. Zero, zero. You make the other numbers. <laughs> that, doesn't, that doesn't work. You make, you make the six. Seven. Okay. So right now, what happens? You make the nine. Is that? Ten. So we come. Good. Seven. This seven has moved this number up one. It's overloaded that 